welcome all of you here. More importantly, a lot of people who are watching these events uh, via internet, uh, all over the world, uh, in Asia, in South America, and everywhere. Now, I have the privilege to introduce you, and so I would like to set the straight stage. Why we are here? Why we need to do that? Well, these are my potential disclosures, but first of all, we all understand that there has been an increase in the complexity of the patients that we see, which is not only meaning that uh, patients are older than 10 years ago, but actually there are much more comorbidities simultaneously present. Another major problem is about quality of life. We are not taking care of quality of life, and this is shown in this nice study coming from the US showing these are patients with breast cancer. So it seems that if you have a poor quality of life, forget it that the treatment for your, for your cancer will help you to improve the quality of life. You're poor, your quality of life is poor, it will stay poor. Only if you have an excellent quality of life, this will stay excellent over the years. Now, we know, however, that malnutrition since many years is a significant uh, negative prognostic factors for our, for our patients. And still, we are not really tackling the problem. What can we do with nutrition? But we can do a lot of things. This is a very nice and recent study showing that, for example, if we manipulate the macronutrients, we can improve, for example, the uh, healthy aging of the, of the population. For example, you see nicely here that you have a substitution, an isocaloric substitution of protein. So you place carbohydrate with proteins, you have a higher likelihood of having a healthy aging. Not only that, we also forget about water. Water is extremely important. There are many, many epidemiological studies, this is only one of them, showing that if we forget to hydrate our patients, their quality of life, and more importantly, their expectation of survival is significantly reduced. Now, do we have any data showing that, indeed, if we have an early individualized intervention, the patients will do better? Uh, of course, yes, these data are coming out, and you will hear during these, uh, this event. This is uh, just a, a recent one clearly showing that, uh, for example, there are many patients that uh, reduce the risk of delirium if they are fed. More importantly, look at this. If the patient uh, are fed and their nutritional status during hospitalization remains stable or even improved, you have less inflammatory infectious disease and you have a shorter length of stay, which is what we really would like to do. Now, a more philosophical question, a more fundamental question. Why should we do that? Why should we care for the patient? We should care for the patient because of the length of stay, quality of life. I would like to propose a different approach. My different approach is that we have to do it because this is how we are. It's like the story of the Scorpio and the, fro and the frog. We need to do it. And to build the case, I would like to bring all you back 400,000 years. A few weeks ago, a nice paper came out in Science Advances. It's a story of a group of Spanish paleoanthropologists who found in a valley in Spain, uh, the remains of uh, a community of uh, men of Neanderthal. One of these uh, members of the community was a child. And they were looking at the bones of, of this, uh, uh, this child, and they found that it's very likely that this child was, died when he was seven, eight, nine years old. So it's a child who lived. So it means that even in very harsh condition, the community was really supporting him. Even if the food was not available every day, even sometimes the winter was very, very cold, still the community wanted to help him. So it's our, it tells how we are, we are done, what we should do beyond health economics, beyond muscle mass, beyond everything. We are here to help and support.